Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the users and groups section here in the accounts area of uh, OS X server. Now, uh, for those of you that are approaching this uh, video maybe for the first time in the series, uh, one of the things I am going to talk about is the difference between local and network accounts. And so what you may want to do before you go through this process or this particular screencast is you might want to go back and look at the screencast I did just prior to this on Open Directory because you will need an open directory in order to create network accounts. And so I just wanted to warn you of that uh, up front so that you knew that that was needed in order to make this happen. Now, in the accounts area, we can create users, and those are uh, people who will be accessing your services. Those will be accounts that will allow people into the different services on your server. And then we have groups, which are groups of people that we can put together to manage multiple users in one place. So that's what these two different things do for us. Now, when you first open the uh, users panel, you'll notice that we automatically have a local user here. And this user would be your system administrator account or the main account that you have on the server. If you've got other local accounts on the server, those will probably show up in here as well under local users. Uh, but I want to show you something here. If you look at this drop down, you notice we have local users and local network users. And so let me just say all users for a minute. And you'll notice that now it says under my name here, local user. Now the difference between a local user and a local network user is this. A local user only has access to uh, various services and things uh, on the local computer unless you allow them to have access uh, on, on your network. Now a local user also has their home folder stored on the actual local server. Uh, you don't have the option with a local user to have uh, home folders stored on the server that allow you to log into any computer on your network and have those home folders show up. I'm going to do a screencast on home folders uh, being stored on the server to show you how that works, but I wanted you to know that that's kind of the difference between those things. Uh, network uh, users, local network users, also are able to, uh, again, log into other computers uh, to access their services. Uh, for instance, if you have a computer and you want to access, uh, have access to calendar services or contacts, you would use that login in order to access those services. So that's kind of a general overview of how that works. So let me first just kind of show you uh, what a local user looks like. If I just double click on this, it brings up the details screen here. And as you can see, you've got a full name, you've got an account name, uh, which is just basically a short name. So this would be your full name, this would be your short name. Uh, you can come in here and add email addresses. And so an addition in your Yosemite server is the ability to add multiple addresses uh, to a person's line here. Uh, in the past, you could only add one address because it was assuming you would want the address that you would set up on the webs, uh, on the mail service here. Uh, but now it allows you to old, add multiple addresses because it really treats this account uh, like one of your network accounts that where you may want to look up that information. Uh, what they basically did is move things over from Workgroup Manager, where you could have multiple addresses, now over into uh, the actual main uh, server interface here. Uh, I also have the ability to allow users to uh, this user to log in uh, or to administer this server. Now, the login button here is a button that only shows up for local users because I may not want a local user to be able to log into the server's services remotely. So it gives me the option of enabling that or not. So if you want to use your local account, like you may be the administrator on the server and you also use the server as a local account, you'll want to go ahead and check this so you can log into these services remotely. Uh, and then you have the option to administer the server. And so again, that allows you to basically make changes on the server as if you were an administrator. Now you've got the home folder here, and again, you see that mine is local only, and that's how I, uh, how I have it set up. If I just uh, click on this, I do have the option of not having uh, a local home folder. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a minute as I set up a network account. Uh, you can limit your disk usage uh, to a certain size so that this user uh, will only use a certain amount of gigabytes or megabytes on your server, uh, so that basically it won't take up all of your space. Uh, I can add them to different groups, and I'm going to talk about groups in a minute to show you what that looks like. And then you can put in keywords and notes for this user if you want to. Uh, and so that kind of gives you an overview of the basic account screen. I'm just going to cancel this for a minute. So let me show you what it looks like to actually set up a, a network user. I'm going to click the plus button here. Now, what I do want to tell you again is uh, I would make sure that you don't set your users up until after you've set up your open directory if you are going to use network accounts. Because if you do, you're going to be setting up only local accounts, and you're going to have to redo them in order to get them to be network accounts after you've run open directory. So again, just a warning on that so you don't get caught. Let's hit the plus here. 
So you can see here, I've got a new local network user. I can choose to make them a local user if I want to uh, on the computer. And this would be the same thing as if I was creating a new user inside of System Preferences, uh, where you go to the User Accounts area. So I can do it in the server uh, area instead. So I'm going to create a network user. And let's name this guy. Let's call him John Doe. And he's got an address, an account name, and this would be his short name. And so I'm going to shorten it all the way down to John D because that's a little easier. Now we can give uh, John Doe uh, an email address or if he's got outside email addresses. So let's just say he's J uh, maybe John. I'll say John at doe.com, let's say. And we could add multiple email addresses if he's got them. But let's just say that's all he's got for now. Uh, we create a password for him. and then verify. So we got that done. Now I can decide whether I want him to administer the server. Now notice I don't have that little checkbox for login and that's because John is a network account so we assume that this account will be used to log into the server from different places. Uh, I'm not going to allow him to administer the server. Now I can create a home folder for John on this server uh, if I want him to, uh, to have his home folders here uh, or I can say none services only. Now, if I say local only and I create a uh, home folder for him, what it's going to do, let me pull up Finder for a minute, it's going to actually create him on your actual server's users folder. It's going to create another user here that says John Doe. Now, I don't need John to have his home folders on here because I just want a network account, so I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do is say services only so that I don't create those home folders. And you notice what disappeared there. Let's go back to local. The uh, disk usage is actually gone away because I'm not putting home folders on there any, anymore so that I don't have to worry about disk usage because when I go to none services only, I'm not creating anything on the server. I'm just creating a login. So I can create keywords for him. And so I can say, uh, for instance, if he's in a department, I could say, you know, maybe he's in the uh, tech department or something like that. I can create that keyword, and then if I've got a ton of users, I can do searches by that keyword. You see, it kind of makes it like a tag. And I can put a note in here about John, uh, just notes about his account or whatever. But I'm just going to leave that alone, and I'm going to say Create. And so now it's created John Doe as a local network user, and you can see it labels them differently here. And I can sort this way. I can say local users only, then John disappears, and I can say local network users, and now only John shows up. So let's just go to all users here. So you can see that I've created that user there. Now one of the things I want to show you is uh, I'd like to show you also the uh, settings area down here. You notice when I click on this setting, I've got a few things that I can do. Uh, I can edit the user if I want to. So if I just click edit user, it's going to bring up that window for me to do some edits. Let me cancel that. Uh, I can also come in and edit uh, the user's access to services. And so what this does is gives me a drop down of all the different services that might be available. And anything that I've got checked means that that person has access to those services. So I don't want them to have access, let's say, to SSH or maybe screen sharing. I can uncheck those and say OK. And now they no longer have access to those services. So they can't even try to log in because it won't work that way. Now, I've, again, I've made that change for all of the different users here because I'm under the all users area. If I click here, I can also edit e email options. And so I can say where their mail should be stored. Do I want to store it locally or do I want it forwarded to another location? You know, if I put forwarded, then it asks me to enter a forwarding address. Let's just go back to stored locally. Uh, if I store it locally, I can limit the size of the e email box to whatever I want so that, again, it doesn't take up too much space on the server. I'm just going to cancel that. Now those changes again were just for all of those users and you'll notice that I have these things all blanked out right here. That's because I'm on the all users tab. If I just do this instead and let's say I go with um, the local user and I go right here to local users only, what happens now is it allows me to add some other changes. What I can do is I can create a template from this user and let's just say that I did a lot of things to fill out for this user and I want to create a template. If I click on this, it basically gives me all of the settings that I have for that particular user. And what I can do is make these settings and save this as a template. So in the future, all I've got to do is create a new person from a template that I've set up. So I can put multiple templates in here, and it just speeds up the process of creating users. So I don't have to keep typing in keywords and all that kind of stuff. Let me just click Cancel. And so you can see here that I can edit my templates if I want to uh, at any time. And if I just click Edit, then any templates I have, I can come in here and edit those things. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. Let me just cancel it. And the other thing I've got is I've got edit password policy right here. And let me just click on that. This then becomes the um, the, the basic uh, 
password policy that we had that we used to see in Open Directory. Open Directory used to have the global password policy built into it. Well, it has moved from Open Directory over here to the users area so that you can set it inside this area. Since the passwords really do relate more to the users, uh, they've tried to make it a little easier to make a little bit more sense and move it into the users area. So I can go through and basically set all of the details about how the users deal with their passwords. I can disable login after certain periods of time or inactivity. Uh, I can say that passwords have to differ from the account name, contain one letter, one numeric character. I can really sp uh, be very specific in how I want a password uh, set up so that I make sure that it is a strong password, that it's not a weak one that someone could guess. So I can set that global password policy in here. Let me just cancel. And I can do the same thing again for local network users. It's just notice now uh, I've got this little lock because I can lock any changes that are on here so only the administrator can get at them. But I've got the same idea. I can create templates for local network users, edit those templates, and edit the password policy for them as well. All right, so that's what uh, all of the different settings I can use here. Now, one more thing I want to show you is the groups area. And what groups do is they allow you to manage multiple users. Now, just like users, I've got uh, either all groups, I've got local groups. Notice that the group disappeared. Or I can set up local network groups. And so usually when you create um, your open directory, it's going to automatically set up a work group group just like this. Let me just double click on this so you can see what it looks like. So a group still has a full name and an account name, just like anything else. Uh, you can set up mail lists for the particular group. Uh, you can also allow mail from non-group members if you want to. So you do have some control of this particular work group and who can mail, uh, send mails and receive mails or not, either in-group or non-group members as well. Uh, I can set up group services. I can give the group a shared folder if I want on the server where users can then share files and folders. And this comes into play for the groups themselves as well as it'll show up when we talk about the wiki and some of those other collaboration services. I can also make group members, so anybody listed down here, uh, buddies in messages. So when they're doing their um, uh, the different messages from the messages app, they can have automatically have their buddies be in there based on who the members of the group are. Now you notice this create group wiki. We could set up a wiki if I had the wiki service running, which I don't right now. That's why it's grayed out. And then members. I can add different members to this group. Hit plus and then just start typing the member member's name. And you can see here, here's me. I could add myself to this particular group as well. Now I'm in that work group. Uh, again, I can do keywords and notes at the same time. And if I want, I just say OK. And that will then save the changes to that particular work group. Now, just like in uh, our users, you've also got some settings down here that you can use. Again, you can edit the group, edit the group's access to services. So if you prefer to manage the group um, by uh, what services that they can access, you can do this as well right inside here. And then those groups, the people in the group will only have access to particular services. So this makes it convenient if you're trying to manage groups of people. You can set up the group information and manage it from there. Uh, again, you can create a template from a group. Just like we did before, that shows the different templates and how we want to set it up. Again, not quite as critical because there's not as many settings, but you could do that if you wanted to. If you're working on a business and you got different departments and things like that, you could set a template in here. And then you can obviously edit those templates as well. So that gives you an idea of how users and groups work inside the account section. Again, this is uh, why we have a server in the first place usually is to be able to set up these different accounts and have network accounts so people can have access to the various services that we're going to set up. And so hopefully that helps you get started in how to make that happen. We'll talk a little bit more about home folders and logins and things like that in future screencasts. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.